So you've got the drawing. Uh, tracing paper, what, what, why is that? Well, it's just to transfer the image to the cardboard. It's just the easiest and simplest way, really. Okay. You just trace it off, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to press on and make a strong image so I can transfer it later. Yeah. It's much clearer, isn't it, the tracing? Hmm. And what's interesting is that in your drawing there were like um, a sort of lot of little lines, but in your tracing you're really keeping it down to like one. The, the bare minimum, yeah, because you've got to follow the line so you get it. So uh, that's all there is to it actually. Then you've got to take that off. Yeah. Do the other side of it and then transfer it to the cardboard. Right. Okay. So take that off. Do the reverse side of it. This is the, this is the actual graphite that's going to go down onto the cardboard actually. So you've got to press on and hold your pencil at an angle so you get like a broad yeah. stroke rather than a fine line. Is this a different pencil? It looks darker, or are you just pressing harder? Just pressing harder, yeah. yeah. Ideally, you would use a softer pencil. Mm. This is like a HB, but you'd kind of use a, a 6B, really, yeah. for, for the for the tracing. If, you, if you're doing a very detailed image, it's not so bad with this, because it's, it's very simple, just a few lines. Yeah. But so when you were forging drawings and things, Mm. Did you, um, I mean, you can't have just done them with a pencil that you bought at Paper Chasers, I think. Did you have to like, manufacture special... Uh, well, it, it, it depends what you're doing. Like, anything like 18th century or later, just a, a, a graphite pencil. This has been going 200 years, so you, you can't really tell the difference. Right. But if it's something like the like this 17th, 16th century or even earlier, then you've got to use something in particular what they use at that time. You've got to pay attention to detail, I suppose. Yeah, so so what, that would be like pen and ink, would you make your own ink? Or yeah, ma make, make your own ink. you made ink Basically. yourself, have you? Yeah, the, the old girl stuff, which is, just, you know, anyone wants to make that stuff. It's... Right. Yeah. Well, you say that, but I'm, I'm impressed by the idea of you making your own ink, well, your yeah, own 18th well, century well, ink. Well, you have to look like, like 16th, 17th century, using old paper, which I've made myself, which is pretty involving. So you made the paper as well? Well, to get the watermarks in, you see, with using old paper, like the margins of old old books, you trim the, the blank margins off, which is quite a lot in a in a in a book. If you if you be careful, all the blank spaces, like the printing on it, turn it to a pulp and then reform it as paper. But it, it's the sizing, but that you know, that's a, that's another story, like the sizing of it. So it, it looks like a broken down size when they tested. There's a lot to it, you know. Right. The, the old stuff. But. So you made. You made your own paper. Yeah. You put your own watermarks in it. Yeah, which are distinctive, and that kind of the experts really like to see that, especially yeah. if the sizing's broken down in it and it's got the right watermarks. It really kind of because where would right. you get it? Where would you get like seventeenth-century paper blank sheets yeah. with the broken down sizing in but it? Also, you quite often read. I mean, I've written it recently. I can't remember what it was. Somebody found a drawing, and and mm. one of the things that they said made it authentic was that it had the right watermark in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But that could have been you making that, or yeah, well, you, yeah. people do, yeah. And then you make your own inks or your own pencil and that. So. Yeah, uh, ch chalks and like a sanguine chalk. Like I said, any, anything 18th century and beyond, you can use modern graphite pencils, which they used. You know, so. yeah. Great. Okay, so you've done right. the tracing. Yeah. What, what happens now? No, just got to trace this onto the cardboard. I've got to, I know got to watch you pressing too hard and puncturing the cardboard, but it's not too bad if we do. So this is a pretty crude process, isn't it? It's yeah, crazy. of course it is. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Most of, most of it is making art is pretty much basic hard work, really, and just boring repetition. A lot of it. Yeah. So it's it's just necessary to get the thing there, the finished article. You know, these these are just steps along the way, kind of. Yeah. Uh, David Hockney's book about the um, optical instruments that people use. So in, in um, Anger, for example, mm. when he was doing one of his, you know, he did all those fantastic portrait drawings of yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Um, he would use a camera lucida, which is this, this thing you look into with a lens that, and, yeah. but he'd only make like three or four marks. Yeah. It would be the, you know, the chin, the shape here, exactly. where the eyes are, where the nose is. Because mm. what really differentiates people is just this positioning, well, isn't this it? Is it? Yeah, and it's, it's absolutely microscopic, really. Out of millimetres even makes a big difference. Just get it out by a tiny amount. It doesn't look like the person. Get it just a little bit to the left, left a little bit to the right, and bang, out they come. Yeah. Personality, it's, it's, it's weird. 
Well, anyway, yeah, so you've got that. So yeah. now, now what happens? Now we've got to get a sharp blade and we've got to cut this out in profile because this is what we're going to model the clay against. It's just my way of doing it. Most sculptors don't do it like that, right? but I find when I've got to get a lightness quickly, it just serves easily, so that's what I do. So this is kind of your own... It's just, it's just a thing I do myself when I'm trying to get a lightness quickly, so... Yeah, it's just the it. Sean Greenhouse it's, method of getting a quick... Yeah, it's not, it's not like a standard art school thing, I suppose, they've thrown on it, you know. It works for me, so... So oh, every, every, all your sculptures, like you know, the the, the, the ones you sold to the, to the British Museum and all that, they were all done using this sort of method. Yeah. Now we've just bit. got to cut this fine profile, but that'll take a little bit of time. This is just a fiddle bit, if you like. Yeah, the nose. It's always like, nose is always hard, aren't they? Mm. Is that his little beard? Yeah. Is that, yeah. Beard, mm. Goatee. Yeah. So that's that's just about all I can do with that. I'll get that that's on good. the wheel now. Amazing. That's what it is, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, simple. Yeah. All right, we'll get the, the wheel. Then we need clay just to mount it with a couple of blocks and then we can start plastering the clay onto it and try and get it oh, looking see. something like. I see. So this will be in the middle? The yeah, well, we'll to put two blobs of clay either side just to secure it and then we can start building up around it. Yeah. Maybe shove a couple of pencils through it to reinforce the clay as it comes up. Good. So that's, that's all there is to that. Let's do that. <laughs> 